That roar when you ran out just puts goosebumps on the back of your neck. Voss went straight through, Andrew's there! He's just forever looking for an opportunity. Exhilarating football! That's a good sign of a good team. Accelerates and punches through them! And he's only going to get better. And the hammer stands them up! And Queensland going to do it again! Well, thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Queenslander. Our episodes in the lead up to the NRL final series brought to you by Tab, where you can get some pretty good odds, if, especially if you're a loyal Broncos supporter, lucky to make the finals or anyone outside the storm, you can get good odds on to win the premiership. But the safest bet this week is that things will be very tense at Suncorp Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Broncos versus Dolphins, winner stays alive, loser, Gonskis. And the other part to that is that the Dragons, who sit above both those teams, play at the 3 o'clock on yeah. Saturday. So I think there'll be some people, you know, maybe not the players, but there'll be people obviously wanting to know the result of that game going into the Dolphins-Broncos. But, yeah, it's a big game. I, I mean, the Dolphins are yet to beat the Broncos. We're at Suncorp. It's a Dolphins home game. And I think... I think this is going to be an epic contest. I think, you know, both teams are desperate for the two points and um, I think the atmosphere will be will be big. Oh, it'll be fantastic. You're right there, Lockie. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be a turnstile this week, would you? Yeah. They'll be spinning around uh, the whole time. We've seen some uh, very good crowds uh, recently, uh, but not as good as what this is going to be. This will be an absolute beauty and, uh, um, you know, I'm sure the, uh, the NRL will be uh, rubbing their hands together. And 32 degrees, will that play a factor? I know it's a yeah. 5.30 kick-off leading into night, but that could play into either team's hands? Well, it depends on... I mean, I mean if it was a team coming up from Sydney, maybe, but yep. I think yeah. both teams being based in Brisbane, but by 5.30, it'd be <clears throat> quite pleasant. Um, yeah, I think... Well, look, whenever it's warm, I think fitness is a big, big part of performance, and I think both teams... You know, I don't think... You know, I think both teams are very fit, so I don't think that there'll be a, you know, I don't think conditions will favour one or the other. Mm. And River Fire's on this weekend too, so imagine that, like going to the footy and then going to River Fire. So you'll see fireworks, <laughs> guaranteed fireworks. You'll see it on the field and then after the field in the sky and Brisbane yeah. CBD. Yeah. But uh, out of these two teams jostling, well, who's more deserving to make it into the finals? What we've seen this season, the Dolphins or the Broncos? Oh, I think that's a, bit, that's a hard one uh, to, to answer. Who's more deserving? I think they, uh, they both have put in a, uh, a good effort. Dolphins, year one, um, they've, uh, you know, I think um, were very similar to Broncos in year one. Uh, started off, um, you know, uh, quite well. Um, and the learning curve um, is, uh, is something that um, is, is very interesting to look at after the season's finished on what went right, when it went right, uh, the things that went wrong, what were they, um, how serious. Um, so I'm sure the, uh, um, you know, uh, Benny will enjoy uh, having an opportunity to, uh, to look back. But um, I, th I think they've been very good. And, you know, Kevy's, uh, um, he was, he's been in a, in a bit of a tough position after the glory of last year. There have been some difficult issues uh, this year and um, I admire the way that, uh, that he's handled it. There's been some difficult uh, times and um, the press conferences have, uh, have thrown up some, <laughs> some, uh, you know, some tough questions to him but um, he hasn't um, been upset by them. He's, uh, he's taken them on and used them as a bit of a, uh, a, a fuel to, uh, to make sure that uh, his uh, performances are better and that of his team. Well, the Dolphins last year, remember, they started so well and they fell in a heap. Yeah. And it, it, to some extent, it's happened again this year, just that it happened later. Yeah. yeah. I think, I read a stat today, I think over the last 12 games, they've only won three. Yeah, yeah. one of their last six, yeah. So yeah. Um, it, they've fallen away. Jeremy Marshall King has been yeah. one of the, the players that has been missing of late, and I think he adds a bit of spark. So there's talk he might come back this week, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a big game. Uh, Wayne's obviously got the experience factor as managing the week, but once they get to the game, it'll come down to the players. Yeah. And from my perspective, you know, 
Well, yeah, I think Adam Reynolds holds the key. Yeah, He's the yeah, experienced sure. playmaker, yeah. Yeah, you're exactly right there, Lockie. Um, and uh, the Dolphins forwards, I thought they were very impressive the first two-thirds of the season. Uh, they found it a little bit tough. Um, there's been plenty of injuries uh, that have uh, played a role, but uh, the key playmaker, um, he's the man in charge of this one. Mm. Um, he's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm sure, we're going to see his best performance of the season. Mm. That's what concerns me about the Dolphins. No Jesse Bromwich this week due to HIA protocols, already yeah. missing Tom Gill, but Tom Flagger. I just look at their team and think they're just one or two middle forwards too short. Yeah, um, which is a bit of a reminder of, you know, yeah. Origin 3 for us. We're just yeah. missing those one or two, you know, Tino and yeah. Flagler. And it makes a big difference because if, if, it's, if it's an aggressive contest, which it will be because there'll be a bit of passion and a bit of mean, meaning in the game. I, and there's talk pain has yeah. my play. Yeah. So... If he comes in, that's a big in for the Bronx. Um, but again, if you're not laying a platform and they've been disadvantaged by some of those players you mentioned that are out, then it makes it hard for someone like Katoa, who's mm. still learning his trade, to try and dominate the game. Now, look, you've got a bit of a tie to the Broncos here. No, <laughs> no letting this, the secret out well, of the bag? Or... He, he, he trained yesterday, he ran yesterday, yeah. and um, it, he's got to get through one more session. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, I, I think the, the thinking was that the Melbourne game, and with Reese, yeah. if there's still a chance of playing finals, then they might be worth the risk. That's but, right. But Payne might be ready to go this week. Mm. How much of a motivational factor would that have, just seeing him in the team, especially I'm a younger player and running out, well, Payne Huss is there, that relaxes me a bit more? Yeah, yeah. look, he's a player that brings confidence. There's, there's a lot of players throughout you know, the years have done that. They can just... Whether they're coming back from a six-week layoff or, you know, they're just... They come in and they just their presence makes a big difference. And, you know, it's phenomenal that Payne's five-time yeah. Morgan medalist yeah. already, you know, and he's still... How many times did you win it? Can you remember? Uh, three. Three? Three. So but Payne's, he's got pa by Payne's two. on the same as uh, Alan Morgan, Wenger. Yeah. He's still got, you know, potentially a decade left in the game. So yeah. phenomenal effort from that perspective. But, yeah, look, if he's... If he's there, that's a big, big in for the Bronx. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure you two guys have heard me say it a, a lot. I have a, a favourite saying that um, a certain player uh, can create doubt in the mind of the defenders when uh, when they're running. But uh, Payne, he creates discomfort in the mind of the defenders every time he carts the ball. And I love watching him. Love watching him play. He's, power, he's got power. Um, he's got authority. He's got the ability to be able to offload when he uh, uh, when he can. Uh, this is going to be a great game. It'll be uh, the, the turnstiles will be ringing. Yeah. And based on the first question before, I feel as though the Dolphins deserve to be in the finals more. The way they've navigated through their injury crisis of no Flegel and Gilbert. But the next mm. question, which is which of these two teams do you think has got a better chance of progressing through September? I'm going to say Broncos because of the finals experience last year and likely to get Huss and Walsh back. So out of the two, who do you think more likely to cause damage if they make the finals? Yeah, I think mm. there's more X factor in the Bronx. But yeah. if Walsh is there, no, Ezra, Ezra's done. Yeah, he's done, yeah. Kane, but just with Walsh, yeah. I think he creates... I mean, you've got the Hammerer, who, you know, there's plenty of X factor there too, but, um, yeah... I think Adam Reynolds, yeah. you know, yeah. driving the ship probably could, you know, they, I, I think the Bronx could do more damage if they make the finals than the Dolphins. Yeah, agree. Adam Reynolds creates opportunities for Walsh. Yeah. Uh, Walsh, uh, he'll go putting himself into perfect position um, and do a, a great job. He's a, a handy man to have at this time of the year. I watched Dolphins training this morning too. Hammer trained at left centre and Trey Fuller came back to fullback. So mm -hmm. they've got quite a few injuries. So don't be surprised mm. to see that Saturday afternoon. Maybe too yeah. potentially to hammer to defend Katoni Staggs because Katoni Staggs has been in pretty good form. Yeah, I think Trey's a good, like he's a good player. Like I think he brings. He, he could blow the game open. Yeah, he, mm. but, but having both of them on yeah, the field, hammer. Yeah. And, so I, I think it's you know finding a place for both of them is doesn't it makes sense. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, well, actually, now that you've mentioned that, I think that's exactly how they'll line up. Yeah. Wait, how much would Wayne Bennett? love to beat the Broncos to knock them out of the finals contend. You've both played extensively for him. He would love it. He won't mention it this week, but he would be thriving. Well, it's like yeah. any, any player that goes to another club and they play against their old club. Mm. It, there's, there's extra meaning to it. Yeah. And I'm sure that's, 
the same for Wayne. Mm. Um, I'm, you know, Derby Farnworth would be the, yeah. the same boat. Left the club, and you know, sometimes the the best way to sort of get back at, you know, mm. that that particular move is to win on the scoreboard. Yeah. Oh, well, he's. He's one of those blokes that, that likes the, uh, the the challenge at hand. He's been to a few clubs now. Yeah. So he's nearly wanting to win every weekend <laughs> yeah. to meet the yeah. club that he used to be at. But um, uh, coming home, where it all started, um, pro after his, uh, his, his move to Canberra, of course. Um, but there'd be something special about this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And speaking of finals and Wayne Bennett, it was a big anniversary for you on the weekend while with few of your Wynnum teammates. Yeah. Am I allowed to say 40th anniversary? Arguably the greatest BRL team of all time. If you go back and watch the vision, 1984, Wolves win a Manly Seagulls beat Bennett South 42, 42 eight points to eight in yeah, the grand reckon, final. And I reckon we could have scored another 20. Yeah. At the end of the game, the boys were flicking it over their shoulders and throwing it back between their legs uh, from dummy half day. Uh, it was that was the hottest rugby league team, Brisbane club rugby league yeah. side that I ever played in and I got some abusive calls from a few of my old Valleys mates that um, we beat, he said, you've got to remember we beat um, we beat South in the grand final, 26-0, you know, bring that up. And, <laughs> and I said, well, fellas, nice to hear that. I said, but that Wynnum side, we were spoiled, spoiled rotten. Uh, Gino outside me, um, yeah. was Brett Col French, Colin Scott, Colin Scott, Scott was the fullback, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Terry Butler uh, was one of the uh, the wingers. We had um, Warren Green, who never used to miss a, a goal that he uh, that he used to kick it was uh, it was wonderful and um it, it was for greg dowling i think was playing in the yeah. second row yeah in, who was his halfback uh dorsey oh, yeah. Dorsey. yeah dorsey was the uh, the halfback and he was as aggressive a halfback uh, he yeah. gave away quite a few penalties um and he used to blow up a little bit but gee he was worth his weight in gold in defense um he uh he, he, he was terrific he, he really was worth his weight Mm. Yeah, if you get a chance, go back and look at that BRL 1984 grand final while at his best in that one. Um, just before we leave the Broncos, Lockie, too, Trent Barrett is going to come to the club next year. He's yeah. been assistant for mm. um, Kevin Walters because John Cartwright's going to English Super League and Lee Breers, who's done an excellent job, is going back home. Thoughts on Barrett heading to the Broncos? So Trent, uh, he's been head coach at Manly, Bulldogs, uh, and you know, he's been the caretaker coach at Parramatta, so he's got... Plenty of experience uh, at that level. Uh, and he also obviously been an assistant coach, knows the difference between a head coach role and assistant coach. But what he'll bring, like, he's got an attacking mindset. Yeah. So he, he plays, he likes to play an expansive game. So he's going to come in um, and, you know, probably do have a fair bit of input to the attack. I mean, you only got to look at Parramatta against the Broncos last Friday night. They threw the ball around early, and yeah. that's 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 the way. When I played with Trent, that's the way he liked to play. So, I think there's a lot of positives about his appointment, and um, you know, I think Kevy's really looking forward to working with him. Yeah, and that phone call just telling us uh, yeah, from, uh, from another fan that yeah. uh, that yes, uh, he's worth his weight in gold, and um, I like him. I like him as a uh, as a. I liked him as a player. Um, his, uh, his involvement uh, in the coaching has been good. There's, there's no BS about him. He's, uh, he's a lovely bloke and um, he's, he's got challenges uh, that, he, uh, that he faces, likes to take on. And plenty of people um, were suggesting that, um, you know, he wasn't the kind of, that, was, that would make a, a very good coach, but uh, he's gone on to bigger and better things, yep. some great things. I I, in the 2000 World Cup, I roomed with him for about nine weeks. So I got to know him pretty well there. He's, he's a team he's a team person, team yeah. first sort of. He's a good bloke. So. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah. How much hair gel did he go through in nine weeks in Great Britain? I don't, know, I don't think he goes through any. I think he's hair. It's all natural. It's all natural. Just stands <laughs> up like that. Yeah, so. well, Adam Reynolds has come in and said they'll have the best looking assistant coach next year. So yeah. that's another positive there for the Broncos with uh. Trent Barrett heading there. Um, the Cowboys, they're currently in sixth position mm. on the ladder. Well, big game against the Melbourne Storm. You'll see live and free on Nines World of Sport, Wide World of Sports Thursday night against the Storm, how important is it to win this one? Yeah, well, it's vital for them to, uh, to win it. Um, there's been some suggestions that, that the Storm are um, Running about dead. to yeah. Yeah, push all of their players out, give them a, a rest. And I was having a look on the, uh, uh, the NRL the, um, site before, and I think they had um, Melbourne Storm at $4.80 and the Cowboys at about $1.60. So there's obviously some word getting out that uh, perhaps, yes, there is going to be plenty of uh, plenty of players missing. Um, I think I'll, I'll wait till 
confirmation of that. But um, uh, the, the Cowboys have been uh, in in pretty good form, and they've got um, a little bit of self-belief uh, back on board. But they're up against a, a team that you never ever underestimate, and uh, I'm sure that you know we can have a, a Melbourne team go out there that mightn't have um, a whole pile of their stars, but you'll still see a good performance from them. Could it be a mental trap, Lockie? Coming up against the understrength Storm team, everyone expects you to win, whereas those Melbourne players on the periphery have something to prove to Bellamy? Yeah, 100%. Well, I think time and time again, Craig's just created this culture mm. that whoever gets the jersey, they do a job. So they will come and they will play the Storm like they always do. They miss, they'll, they'll be missing some, some talent, some players and some experience, but... Uh, yeah, look, if the Cowboys go out there just thinking that maybe some of those names they don't know, um, it could easily be a trap. Mm. How big a bonus would it be for the Cowboys to get a home final now it's starting to get real hot, not have to travel oh. in week one? Yeah, that'd be, uh, uh, that'd be priceless for them uh, to be playing in North Queensland. We've been talking about at Broncos training sessions how, how warm it's been. Um, it's a lot hotter than it is usually at this time of year. Well, it's going to be considerably warmer in, uh, in Townsville in yeah. games like this. And I'm sure they'd be um, pretty hopeful that they'd be playing the, uh, the afternoon games rather than the, uh, the 7.30 kickoff game. Yep. Um, that uh, would be a, a huge bonus a benefit for them. Uh, but um, finals football, well, you, know, you don't uh, sort of make a judgment on the sides to really have a look at who's playing, who's in the team um, and uh, what the opposition's like. Like we've, we've got a wonderful series coming up for the finals. And coming off a bye too, Lockie, the Cowboys, how important is that this time of year to be refreshed a couple of weeks out from the finals? Yeah, well, some teams respond after the bye better than others, but I think they, they would have taken a fair bit of confidence out of their performance against the Raiders. Yeah. Mm. Um, that was a, a good win. Um, interesting to see what Peyton does with the halfback. I guess Clifford stays gets, there, gets, yeah, stays, yeah. gets yeah. another go. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and again, like, the Storm will come to play, so they'll have to play well, the Cowboys, to win this one. But uh, you want, when you get to the finals, you just want to have confidence and comfort in the way the team's playing, you know? Like, it's, you want to go, in, you want to go into that series knowing that you, 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 you've got form and you're playing well, everyone's doing their job. So the next two weeks is pretty important for a lot of those teams that are in that bottom four that they're, they're going into the finals on the rise. And do you think with the amount of attacking flair they have in the team, the Cowboys, they could be a real danger team come finals time? Because they can look amazing and terrible within the space of 10 minutes. Mm. Well, I think drink water is a big, big indicator for them. Like yeah. they, when he's got time and space, like he's more dangerous than anyone in that team. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to lay a platform for him. And if they do that, then he becomes a real threat. Yeah, yeah he sure does. I'd... Got to like him, and there were plenty of uh, plenty of critics of his that said that he just didn't have the uh, the creative skills to uh, to make uh, life look good uh, uh, for the for teammates. But he uh, he's had his best season. It's been an absolute beauty for him, and um, he's now the man that leads from the front. And a special occasion too, there ahead of Thursday night, Jake Granville will be farewelled, and my boy Felty, who's announced during the week that uh, yes. this is his last season of the Cowboys, so his last regular season home game. So. And I saw a stat before too. So he nine season in a row, he's now scored ten tries or more. So Manu Vatavay from the Warriors and one other player whose name escapes me. So that's yeah. pretty he's impressive. He's been a phenomenal player and like just a a freak of a winger at times. Like just yeah. some of the things that he's done, other wingers couldn't do. So mm. yeah, I was a little bit surprised. How old is he? Do you Thirty-two, know? I think. Thirty-two, yeah, right. I think he's got more footy left in him, but yeah. Um, I mean, maybe his career's not over, but he, obviously his career at the Cowboys yeah. will be done at the end of this year. So hopefully they use that as a bit of motiva motivation to send him out a winner. Yeah, I reckon he's got plenty of time left in him, Lockie. And Jake Granville, I'm a, a fan of him, uh, an old winning boy. Yeah. Uh, down the way, the, um, his, creative, uh, his creativity um, was never sort of spoken about too much. Uh, but I thought his performances, uh, whenever he used to come on the field, particularly after about 20, 25 minutes, um, and he had 
he had really good vision, vision that he didn't get a lot of credit for, and that was looking for the tired defenders that were getting up off the ground a little bit slowly, or the the, uh, the first defender on either side of the ruck being a little bit too wide. And he had wonderful speed off the mark that uh, quite often uh, made life very difficult for the opposing defensive lines. He's hard as nails, tough. Yeah, he old, is. Old uh, Jackie Granville, we, yeah. we used to call him Dicky Knee. Yeah, <laughs> with the hair. Yeah. <laughs> he was one of the best in the grand final victory in 2015 too. So felt in Granville. The last two remaining Cowboys uh, premiers, win premiership winning players still yeah, in that squad. So we wish them the best. Uh, the Titans well and truly out of finals contention now. But looking forward to 2025, who would you rather be? The Titans coming to a season after a full year of Des Hasler and Tino coming back or the Dolphins having lost Wayne Bennett and that new challenge of dealing with a mm. new coach in Christian Wolf. I'm still sticking with the Dolphins because... The last two years, they've finished higher than the Titans, and I feel the standards are higher at the Dolphins than they are at the Titans. Um, look, the Titans for mine, I thought mm. they've improved. I, like, there was a period there where I thought they improved a hell of a lot. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing they need to fix is the defence. Yeah. Mm. They've got points in them, and they play a good brand of football. Though I thought they were a bit more resilient, but the, I guess maybe because the season slipped out of their hands, they just haven't really showing, you know, the resilience they've needed, um, you know, in the last couple of weeks. It's been some poor performances. But defensively, in the off-season, I think that would be Dez's focus. Because there's enough players there, you know, and AJ came back on the weekend. Um, I, I'm not worried about them scoring points, but they've got to stop points. Yeah, it's been a disappointing finish uh, to the season for them. But, mate, they've got a lot of good, very skillful young kids that are playing in the back line on the wing, centres, outside centres, full-back. Yeah, uh, Kinney. Yeah. Oh, wow, what about this kid? He is, he is something. Um, and if uh, usually uh, those guys um, can get spoken about and don't get the opportunities to present their brilliance uh, all that much until they get a little bit more help from, uh, from, the, from the big boys up front, putting them into, into good field position. But there is something about this kid. Um, he's got speed off the mark. He's got um, the ability to, uh, to use his sidestep, his swerve, uh, and saw him uh, um, in a game about three weeks ago. I can't make, remember which one it was where he basically had a pass put out in front of him and almost just picked it off the floor and, uh, and kept going. He's got something about him, and I think that, uh, that we're going to see uh, plenty of the brilliance that's, uh, that I've been sort of talking about and everybody else that talks about the kid has had on display. Yeah, definitely one of the shining lights for the Titans this season. Mm. Keanu Kinney, their number one. But you're right about that defence, Lockie. I think it was 10 all after 30 minutes against the Roosters the other day, and all of a sudden the Roosters have scored more than 40 points. They just have lapses, and it, the lapses come from a, a lack of trust. Yeah. Uh, and I think that comes... Some of those outside backs are still young, inexperienced, and they're making poor decisions. So I think that needs to be where... They need to focus in the off season about get building that trust, getting their, their the systems that they need to learn in the, in defence, and I'm sure they'll yeah they'll have a better year next year. I mean they started with a zero and six, mm, yeah. So they were behind the eight ball early, but oh, I think there's plenty of upside with the Titans next year. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think they can take away from their final two matches? They're both away games, the Knights and then the Panthers. Like, what do you want to see from them? Well, exactly what we we're just talking about. Like, yeah. I think. Just have that real defence um, focus so that you're just working as a unit, trying to minimise the amount of points scored against you. And like I said, there's enough, there's enough talent in that team that if you're not chasing points, you're not under pressure and it'll all just happen. But that's mm. the next two, the next fortnight if I was Des, I'd be just solely focused on what we can do as a defensive unit. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head, Lockie. Uh, they're not under pressure. The opposition are. They're going along there, uh, hoping to win their matches. Um, so they've got the chance to be able to do it. And uh, I'm sure Des will, will probably inspire the players to get them to produce the performances um, that um, you know, we've, uh, we've been hearing about. So it's, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a challenge for them. But uh, they're under no pressure whatsoever. Yeah. And uh, before we go, it'd be remiss of us not to mention, you've got a new mate in your Immortal Club. You were down there last week, the Hall of Fame dinner. Well, what do you think, Ron Coote being added? He, was, he seemed very emotional. You were there live. Yeah, he was. He was. He's, um, uh, you'd put him in the, uh, the, the nicest bloke in the World Club. Yep. On Coot. I, I still haven't met anybody that doesn't like him. He's a wonderful player. I can remember my dad taking me to watch him play. Uh, I was playing lock forward 
um, in my uh, early career, uh, junior career, and Dad always used to talk about the way that he cover defended. Uh, um, he had pace, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, that was the big difference. Uh, but uh, he was thrillful. And um, I haven't met anybody, again, that, uh, that doesn't like him. He is a wonderful PR uh, machine for, uh, for rugby league. He's a very kind man. Um, and has always got time to uh, to talk to uh, to people about uh, about footy, um, about the good points, about some of the the bad points. Um, but he's one of those uh, those people that um, was really wonderful for um, uh, for the uh, for the positive approach and uh, and judgment made on on rugby league so often. He's uh, he's a very very kind man, and uh, I think that um, anybody that uh, also may have been up for uh, for uh, getting picked as, uh, as the immortal would probably not be too uh, upset about that because they realise just how good he was. He was wonderful. Well, I never watched Ron Koo play, but I've always seen him, you know, at functions and stuff. He just seems like a very genuine person, yeah. very genuine man, just a dead set good bloke. But I, I, I didn't realise until the other night that he played in nine grand finals yeah. and won six. Mm. So, you know, I guess that that's... What, from from my perspective, you know, I was born in the late 70s, but I didn't I didn't know that history yep. until the other night. So that's, a, that's an extraordinary record. Yeah, I remember saying to him, you know, that, that there's a difference between you and me, Ron. I said, you've got, um, I said, you've got everybody loves you. And I said, um, <laughs> me, it's everyone hates me down here in Sydney. <laughs> uh, and he said, oh, well, he said, I had everybody like me until I changed clubs from oh. south to east, he said, and that's when they started to hate me. Well, yeah. that's, that's the one thing I was going to ask, like, you know, because they're, they're arch rivals. Yeah. yeah the the yep. book of feuds, yes. right? Yeah. So to go from one to the other, yeah. Yeah. That's, that'd be highly controversial at the time. But, yeah. Yeah. So well, how many, was, did, he, they, how they many did he win him. at each club? Oh. I think I think it was I mean, four grand finals at the Rabbitohs and then he won two, two at the Roosters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, it's, um, it's a great record and... Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, everyone agreed with you know mm. the fact that he was inducted. Yeah. Yeah, and he, he's had some some bad luck in his life. He's had a whole pile of his of his football um, trophies and jerseys. Um, you know, they he lost those. They were burnt in uh, in fires and yeah. things. So he's um, but. Typical Ron Coote, he didn't whinge, moan, groan or complain about it. He just got on with life and uh, he's fantastic the way that he assists young kids though. Junior rugby league, he's, uh, he's, he really is one of the nicest people you will ever meet in your life. And then next to Mortal, our old mate Lockie, he, he's got to be close. Well, yeah. you reckon? Oh, yep, yep. It'd, it'd be and I, uh, it was good to see that night too, you know. I'd, just sort of brought back memories seeing Cameron, Jonathan, Cooper, Billy, G.I. Yeah. Uh, just brought back... Well, well, they're going from outside the back line yeah, yeah, into yeah, the yeah. back line. And, I think and it was good be... to see Steve Renoff there too, you know. Yeah, yeah. He yep. was yeah. Uh, the pearl, I don't reckon, but beside Greg Inglis, inside 10 metres from the try line, you wouldn't... There was no other person rather really give the ball to than Steve Renoff or Greg Inglis. They'd yeah. just find a way to score a try. So yeah. it was good to see both of them in there. Well, to the judges... Um, GI, uh, Billy, all the way in, he's the man that was serving them the ball on, uh, on a <laughs> platter. So I'm. Uh, yeah, I, right time, right place for me. Just yeah, lucky well, those, those, well I think you're going to be in the right place at the yeah. right time next year, Lockie. You'd be yeah. very, very, very surprised. Yeah, quite a few Queenslanders will be well and truly in contention when they induct the next immortal. Not just Lockie, Cameron Smith, Alan Langer. People forget about how good mm. Alfie's career was. Well, we can't wait for that. We can't wait for the footy this weekend. Do it, I clash the Dolphins and the Broncos, but also Thursday night, the Cowboys up against the Storm on Nines Wide World of Sports. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Young. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.